and welcome to Is This Good, the show where we boldly, conclusively, and scientifically decide what things in this big wide world are good. I'm Matt Austin, and with me, as always, is production powerhouse Jason Doyle. Hello. Hi, JD. And now that your stockings are hung by the chimney with care, it's time for an all-holiday show with two of my most festive friends from No Dunks, the best basketball podcast on the planet. Around this time of year, you may know them by their Christmas alter egos, Young Santa and the Reindeer Freak. God rest these merry gentlemen. <laughs> it's Trey Kirby and J.E. Skeets. Welcome to hey, Is This Good? Hey, happy holidays, everybody. I got a Guinness for you, Matty O, to really get into the Christmas spirit. Cheers. Okay, let me know if you want me to pass you a lactate over the information <laughs> superhighway. <sighs> I didn't know that... Um, I consented to you guys being drunk for this podcast. <laughs> We're always drunk when we podcast. <laughs> uh, any big Christmas plans? Anyone going anywhere? Uh, yeah, I'm going to Europe. Ooh. You are? I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Yeah. Well, you told me you were leaving. You didn't tell me where you were going. Oh, well, I'm going to Europe. I'm going to 20 pubs in 20 <laughs> cities. And no, I'm just kidding. Shout out to Lee. Uh, yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to Amsterdam. I'm going to London. I'm going to Paris. All the hits. The greatest hits. Wow. With the whole family? The whole fam. Whoa. So those kids going to smoke some weed in Amsterdam? <laughs> Got that right. <laughs> Sounds like it's right. It's Christmas legal there. Movie here. It's legal there, I think. Trey, I was curious. Um, what is the must-have gift for kids this year? Do you know? The must-have gift for kids this year? Uh, I would say literally anything Minecraft. Mm. Mm. Every kid who is 13 and under plays Minecraft at all times. And they have branded it out to everything. Right. We're talking Legos. We're talking a zip-up sweatshirt where your face looks like a creeper. I didn't know what Minecraft was like six <laughs> months ago, <laughs> and now I'm deep in the game. What is Minecraft? Is that like, um... <laughs> oh God, oh boy. hey man, you gotta have a kid. You gotta wait for that kid to be at least six years old, and then you'll figure it out. Uh, basically, it's what if you could live in a world of Legos? Yeah, I'll say that. Which okay. is cool, you know, like uh, all those crazy structures you build uh, on a table at your house. What if you could live in it and hatch cats? Wow. <laughs> and, when, and what if your head easily pulled off and you had a tiny little hair that also came off? <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice. Um, all right, guys, before we start, quick bit of housekeeping. If you have topics for a future show, email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at isthisgoodpod. Subscribe on YouTube and review us on your podcasting apps. That helps a lot. And remember... Tell a friend or family about the show. Why? Because you've already spent too much money on gifts, and this podcast is free. <laughs> Guys, as always, the premise of the show is very simple. I'm going to give you a topic. You tell me if it's good. These are all holiday related. So if you thought, hey, what a great episode to listen with my kids, you know, there will be some swears. And um, I'm sorry to say, and this is when you turn off, if you have kids, turn off right now. We're going to talk about how Santa may not be real Ooh, okay whoa, whoa, whoa. so may, that's may, a fair may warning may not be real may not be because you still believe right <laughs> i haven't seen evidence completely <laughs> ruling out reality I here agree. I agree. <laughs> okay well let's let's get to that first in the first topic here uh this one is an email good morning from gold coast australia is santa claus good <laughs> right away we're starting oh, right. wow <laughs> coming in hot coming in hot does it teach children that possessions are easy to come by? Is it all about what Santa gives you for being good? Shouldn't children just be good because it's the right thing to do? Should they be bribed to do the right thing? Are we literally worshiping a great Coca-Cola marketing <laughs> strategy? Also, the pressure. I now have to ninja the shit out of Christmas just to keep the spirit alive. What about my spirit? I'm fucking exhausted trying to create a make-believe, forensically correct Santa break and enter every Christmas Eve, while also trying to build bikes and sing along to Michael Buble. And now I have to use apps to make videos? And what the fuck, an old guy breaks into your house, see cookies, and leave gifts, but we also preach stranger danger and common sense? Red flags everywhere. Something has to give. Is Santa good? Help. You're sincerely and Merry Christmas, <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay. Thanks, Andrew. Dice Clay, for that. Uh, that's one no, from that's the Grinch. From, is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's from the Grinch. His name is Aaron W. Right. So uh, again, I warned you about your kids, but I got I got to ask, Santa Claus, is he good? 
<laughs> Trey, you know, if you want to start us off, because I feel like you, I don't know why, but I feel like you embody the most Christmas spirit. Of anyone <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I still believe, man. I still believe. Who cares? <laughs> so what? I'm 38. Is that too old? <laughs> All right. Here's what? what I know about Santa, a real person. <laughs> Giant beard. A guy I know. Yep. Smokes a pipe. Mm. <laughs> Uh-huh. Travels all around the world eating cookies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Works a single night a year. This guy's great. <laughs> Not just good. Santa is very, very good. How can you be against Santa? An iconic look. People should go as Santa more often for Halloween. I think he's so good that we should see Santa more often. See him at every holiday. Why not? <laughs> Easter Santa. Fourth of July you know, Santa. That would kill. Uh, for, uh, yeah, I mean, there is like a, what, a Christmas in July yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. When, when, when fucking losers can't wait to celebrate Christmas again, so they got to do it. <laughs> it's like a half birthday for Santa Claus. Yeah. Uh, but Trey, what about what, he's, uh, what the Grinch is saying in this email? That it's like it's sort of teaching the wrong lessons. Like what about um, this idea that he, he sees you when you're sleeping? He sees you when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. He's just sort of this omniscient uh, peeping Tom. Does that, are you concerned about your kids uh, thinking that someone's watching them at all times? Uh, well, I mean, my kids are a little different. One of their favorite songs is Somebody's Watching You. <laughs> so <laughs> they actually are very interested. <laughs> and that, I don't know, I just... For me, it's like I have a hard time saying that Santa is bad. <laughs> like, it's hard for me to come up with reasons that I'm against mm. Santa. Ergo, he must be good. Well, so so lying... Okay, lying guess what? To your Every kids. parent lies to their kids yeah, yeah. for them to the, do good stuff. Right. You will get this if you do that. That happens every single day for every single parent. Right. This one is just overarching. Yeah. I got no Okay, problem. well... I- I remember being at an airport one time when we were traveling for the show and there was um, a kid in the security line that was crying and like having a tantrum basically. And the mom kept pulling out candy from her bag like to get him to stop. Like, do you want a lollipop? You know, do you want these, you know, candies, whatever, crackers? And JD looked at me shaking his head and he said, never bribe a kid. Never bribe a kid. (laughs) They got to learn how to get through it. But if you tell a kid, hey, You've been naughty this week. You know, if you want that bike, if you want Santa to bring you that bike, you got to be good. So, JD, I mean, did you tell your kids that Santa didn't exist? Because it seems to me this is a form of bribery. Well, we we never said that. And it's never been discussed, actually. They're 14 and 16, (laughs) and they've never confronted me about it, really. I mean, I assume they they don't believe in Santa anymore, but somebody's putting the Christmas presents under the tree and actually this year was the first year that i actually got to cancel christmas that was the whole point i was like all right fuck this we're going we're going on a trip all these presents is stupid let's can we all agree let's it's all stupid so let's go uh but the santa thing we never really bribed them we never said well you better be good for goodness sake that kind of thing i never we never really did that. but did you go through the charade oh yeah for 100 percent of cookies out and oh yeah like, cookies out yeah, yeah. and all that stuff and you know uh to what was the name of aaron you don't have to build the bike but santa can deliver a, a bike in a box right like you don't have to build everything right oh, yeah. I, I i would assume so but what if it's um I don't know. What if it's one of those architecturally, uh, like anatomically, architecturally correct buildings? Like you're you're making like the Duomo in Florence or something. Do you have to build that? I don't know. But what about this idea that he's saying now you have to film it and then show it to your kids in the morning? Be like, oh, I set up this spy cam, another creepy thing, and I caught Santa coming in. Here, you won't believe you won't believe this that's, footage. That's, that's I got. next level. Oh, that's next level. Yeah. yeah. No, you're going too far at that point in my mind. Agree. I, Agree. I, I, I think this is, uh, Santa is ultimately good. Isn't it important for kids to, to make believe? Right? Like Santa yeah. or fairies or monsters under the bed. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. What I also like, though, is Letting them, like you said, JD, whether or not your kids uh, ultimately did figure it out, let them figure it out. It's your first investiga- investigative yeah. case as as a as an adult or a, as a person. Yeah, it's like you're like because at a certain <laughs> age you're like, hold on, this isn't adding up. Yeah, like you start figuring it out. Like yeah. we didn't have a fireplace. That was the number one thing. It's like, how? Where is he coming into our house? <laughs> 
And th- that was like always blowing my mind. Yeah. And like they, my parents, were, well, he comes in through the front door. I was like, what? I thought he locked the front door. You know, like that. <laughs> Not on Christmas. So you start piecing it together, and you know, I've got like I'm like uh, Charlie Day with like the strings right. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hold on, that doesn't make sense. Hold on, what do you mean he's everywhere that's all night? That, that couldn't work. And so like then you just figure it out, and then that's it. You but lied I, to me, Dad. But no, I never. I never. It's like oh. I don't know. You just like have a yeah. moment in your life. You figure like, it out. You figure then, it out. And, and then you good. accept the presence yeah. as, you know, oh, thanks, Santa. Wink kind of yeah. thing. But, but you you <laughs> figure it out. But you also are like, but maybe? I don't want to fuck maybe? with this. I don't want to. Yeah. Why would I mess with this? Exactly. There's a bunch of gifts under my tree in the morning. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm team Santa. It's good. Um, do you guys, uh, JD or Trey, um, did you ever do you ever get upset that your kids are like, "Wow, Santa did everything for us no. this Christmas"? Absolutely, you're like, "Give me the credit." No, that's the point. That's why I think Santa is good. I'm going to land on Santa is good because it is a, a, bold, a bold take, JD. <laughs> I know my boldest take ever on this show uh, because it's about giving without receiving thank you, right? Like it's not. It's it is actually. We, my, the parents are the ones that are giving without the without the thank you. You don't need to thank us, and you sort of the idea to me is it's paid forward, right? Like so, it's the next. They'll do the same for their kids, and and they'll do maybe the same for strangers and stuff. It's like, you know, the spirit of giving is you know the toys for tots and the you know I'm giving my I'm gonna put some slippers on my neighbor's uh, you know uh, front feet. porch feet <laughs> oh front porch front porch <laughs> sneak into their house at night and put slippers on their right. feet Santa <laughs> yeah, and if, if they don't if they don't have a fireplace that door's gonna be wide open yeah. Christmas yeah. Eve You're right so you just you just go in there lift up the covers and put those slippers <laughs> right on their yeah. feet and and no thank you necessary because that's why well it's this the season of giving and that's the whole that's the whole point of it at least i hope that's what it, i mean obviously there's a negative aspect to it it's just like well i'm just gonna all these kids are getting showered with gifts and yeah it's, it's been and commercialized it's of yeah course, and, like and, and and i hate that part and that's why I've, i'm i've canceled it this this christmas uh <laughs> and moving forward frankly but uh uh you know it's fun the other thing i would say and i don't know where i read this but if your kid if if you choose to do this and i don't think this is a bad thing to do but if you choose to be like all these other kids they're talking about Santa it's all it's all fucking bullshit it's all bullshit kid that kid now has something over all the other kids you know what I mean like it's just like oh, these dummies so believe I'll play along I'll just I'll play along mm. we had a girl on our street who who was like this and yeah. and and they were her parents decided we're not we're not doing the Santa thing but she played along with all the other kids on the street and she was totally cool with it but she had that information. <laughs> she had that power over yeah, them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is kind of ima- cool. Imagine being like six, uh, you know, six years old or something and trying to, you know Santa doesn't exist and you're trying to argue with a kid that does believe in Santa. That right. must be the most frustrating argument all the time. Yeah. Like you're like, he doesn't exist. They're like, well, uh, if he doesn't exist, where do I get these presents from? Uh, it's your dad. Well, if he doesn't exist, then why do I see like pictures of him in every store? Why is he in every movie? Why <laughs> yeah. do they sing about him in every song? I well, you- met him. I <laughs> met him. I shook his hand and looked him in the eye. I knew it. In fact, I sat on his lap. a child's first conspiracy the theory. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's Santa Claus is QAnon for children. <laughs> okay, that's one way to look at it. Yeah, I guess. guess you could twist I'm it sure. that way. Oh, I also a theory I was just developing before we turned the camera on is do you, and you know tell me if you think this this holds any water. Santa Claus is the gateway drug to not believing in God. Okay, Christmas is still technically a Christian holiday, right? So you want to you want to <laughs> bolster your Jesus and stuff, but you're saying Santa, you know, like I said, he's omniscient, he can see you at all times, but then you find out Santa's not real. Yeah. So is it a very mm-hmm. far jump to say, well, then what about this other guy you've been telling me yeah. that sees everything and that knows everything? Is he, is the the capital H he real? Right. It's true. <laughs> I things. Yeah. That, it wasn't an issue in our house because everything else, they figured it out pretty quick, I think, because everything else, like mystical, like we don't believe in any of that stuff. And we were pretty, you know, it's like, eh, yeah. I mean, the Easter Bunny, they, they, they liked because that they brought, you know, chocolate. Tooth Fairy was a thing. Oh, yeah, money showing for up. For sure. But, you know, 
they figured it out with us pretty quick because we're like, yeah, that magician over there, that's all. It's an illusion, <laughs> man. It's an illusion. It's not magic. Magic's not real. You know, that kind of thing. So uh, for us, we didn't care. But yeah, I, that's a good point, Matt. You bring up a good point. Hark, the, right, well, hark the Chris Angel. <laughs> I was, yeah, I thought, I mean, timing it wasn't great. If only his name was Harold mm-hmm. Angel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Her- Harold Angel is but, dead. But I do one, one more Phil question, Matt, comedian. before we move on. Sure, so yeah, like, go ahead. So, like, Trey's kids are around the age where I believe, I would imagine they still sort of believe in the idea of, of Santa and all that. What's fascinating to me is what happens if Isla were to, your oldest to come to you and say, is Santa real? Like, straight up ask you. What's the move then? Do you, you like, play, uh, like? What do you think? That's what I would say. There you go. That's, that's nice. what I'd say. What do you go. Yeah. I like that. Because like, for us, our kids are so close in age that as soon as Isla knows, yeah. they're both yeah. going to know. Yeah. Um, so I'll just say, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Nice. How right. are these presents getting here? Yep. Yeah. And why is the handwriting on these presents <laughs> that says Santa the exact same as yours? We're going like, to be getting close. We're gonna, yeah. I, I don't okay. think it's going to happen this year, but I think next year could be the year. And, and, and I'm... As someone who is the eldest sibling, I did the like when I found out. You you can bet your ass I was telling Kelly, your sister, <laughs> you fool, like they, they, they're, they're screwing with us. That's <laughs> with you. Yeah, they're coming in. They're not, nobody's Dad coming in the, the front cookies. door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the worst part. Being Santa is awesome. Like getting to surprise your kids on the morning is awesome. Getting to eat the cookie very cool. But we've started leaving carrots out. Yeah, yeah, we did yeah. that. For the reindeer for the as reindeer. well. Yeah. I don't like having <laughs> to take a giant chomp of a carrot trying to leave like a horse mouth impression. <laughs> it's got to be like a perfect bite. Yeah, you're, you're like Aaron. You go all whole hog. I mean, I would uh, nibble whole a horse. Co- whole horse. <laughs> <laughs> kind of works. But yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that's that's going like the extra mile. We'd always put a beer out as well, which... <laughs> A beer that I definitely didn't need on Christmas Eve. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're drinking all day, basically. <laughs> it's like, oh, God, I got to get through this Guinness for Santa. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Hey, uh, call, well, me call me over. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's it's sad that your kids only have one more year of um, before they know your beard is fake. Mm. Well, <laughs> that's going to be devastating. When they're that's going to that. be, <laughs> be tough for them. You think Santa throws his... um. Reindeer poop bags in other people's trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's just, the next. They're step. just falling from the sky, man. Yeah, he doesn't even clean them up. Yeah, he doesn't clean them. Oh, up. you think they're like birds? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. He's you not should... stopping to have the reindeer. He's shit. gonna get to every house in the entire world in a single night. You, you have chance. To you stop. should be able to turn on that feature on the uh, like uh, Santa Santa Nordic tracker thing, like <laughs> see when they're crapping and where they're crapping. Yeah, it's tra- they <laughs> track him kid. traditionally through dropping <laughs> on rooftops. Yeah, yeah. And Trey, if you want to go to the extra mile, take some of Yam's poop. <laughs> And uh, yams is his dog, not a vegetable. And put it on, put it on the roof, and then take the kids up there and be like, "Oh, yeah. oh my god, the reindeers took the dump here." <laughs> well, I actually do plan on ordering fake poop for Christmas this year. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Wow. My kids are six and eight right now, and every conversation somebody's talking about poop or butt cheeks <laughs> they would Trey they would love this show <laughs> yeah, I know I know it's one of the topics every single week is something bathroom related I always play them that topic but we told them we're like if you keep saying poop at dinner you're gonna get a piece of poop in your stocking uh, I love oh, it in the I love stocking. it didn't work <laughs> they were like yeah <laughs> didn't work at all I think it's in, it's increased ever since we told them that so at this point I'm like I gotta order some fakies uh, respect or go, for the, or go whole hog here I love it I love it <laughs> whole log if you will <laughs> yuletide log uh, yeah, yeah gonna poop shit is just a sock. more fun <laughs> coal <laughs> Okay, next uh, topic. Another email. Hopefully this one is not from the Grinch. Hello! Is it good to bring a prepackaged item to a potluck? I'm talking boxed cookies, canned drinks, etc. I know the idea of preparing food or drink for a large amount of people can feel overwhelming, but isn't it against the spirit of the potluck to show up with a six-pack of Coke? For context, I recently signed up for a work potluck that is taking place more than two weeks from now. One coworker has dedicated themselves to bringing, quote, an assortment of exciting non-alcoholic canned beverages. <laughs> With so much time until the potluck, it's not like this person will be scrambling at the last minute or is too busy to bake or cook. For the record, I don't even particularly like potlucks, but I know many of my colleagues do, and I want to be a good sport. 
I'll be baking two dozen muffins for the team. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Matt. Hoping for a quick and speedy resolution to this grave issue. That's from V. Um, so before we even get to whether potlucks are good, bringing p- prepackaged items to a potluck. Is this good? Who wants to take it? I think it's ultimately fine. I guess I'm good. Like, yeah. the truth is some people are, I don't want them to cook or bake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather them just go spend some money and bring something people will actually, you know, consume, be it food or a drink. So, yeah, I don't think you want every, you know, if we're doing a potluck, we don't want everybody doing that. Because <laughs> yeah. then we're just, we might as well just go to a grocery store together and then, and then sit at the picnic table outside. So, but a couple people that maybe don't feel comfortable, uh, like I said, making something. Yeah, like, uh, no issues with it. And, yeah. and by the way, it doesn't have to be like a uh, like a six pack of Coke or a pack of Oreos. You could go, you could get takeout. Yeah. You could support a local business at Christmas yeah, yeah. and be like, "This is my favorite, uh, you know, Thai dish at this restaurant around the corner from my house. I wanted you all to try it." Or if you are buying cookies, uh, repackage them. I mean, you don't have to lie, but it'll still look nicer if you put yeah, the cookies okay. in like a tin or a box or a pie, I, I don't know, something than, you know, having the Chips Ahoy pack on the counter. I mean, <laughs> go better than Chips Ahoy. Premium cookie. Uh, it's got to be in like a clamshell see-through case. <laughs> yes. You can't buy yes. Chips Ahoy or Oreos, but you can buy the bakery goods to bring. Yeah, yeah. There's a level to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So pre-packaged tray, what do you think? I would never. Uh, I would personally want to make it, but I like cooking for people. Mm-hmm. Some people don't, and yeah. they get very nervous about serving all of their their food to a bunch of people who, I mean, at work, like you see them every day, but maybe you don't know these people incredibly well. A little anxiety there. Um, so it's a little bit of an out, I think, as long as you're, as long as you're putting in the effort to bring something nice and rather than just like I tossed off to the side, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta go grab this real quick. I'm on my way out. Yeah. I think uh, it would be fine. Mm. Um, JD, does it offend you? Uh, not at all. I encourage it. Um, and I think that that's in the spirit of the, the luck part of the pot luck. And I don't like the predetermination of the pot. It's not a pot luck if everybody's oh, telling everybody what I'm bringing. And that's the exact problem with a pot luck. We'll get to that in a sec. <laughs> the, the, pro- the problem that people are organizing what they're bringing beforehand, right? That's the problem. No, the, the problem is that no one's organizing it. Is that it, it's, it's uh, an orchestra without a conductor. But that's the so, fun of it. That's the point of no, it. No, if you, if not, everybody it's not, shows it's up, it's not fun to have three macaronis. Why not? That's that's <laughs> that's why it's called pot luck. Sometimes it's bad luck. If when everybody shows luck, up with a six luck. pack of Coke, that's I the that's the pot luck. Oh, thought we were having a meal. Yeah. Whoops. Whoops. A Daisy. Damn. This is embarrassing. There's only Coke here. <laughs> bad luck. Trying to eat it with a knife and a fork. Oh, that sucks. That's right. And you're Lost ordering a pizza, and we we got burned. <laughs> <laughs> I think though that, that you don't when it comes to the potluck like you know you don't want a team full of James Hardens you want to be the glue guy at the potluck <laughs> look at the list see what everyone else is bringing and then figure out the little gaps that you can fill in so for instance when we have potlucks for Thanksgiving then it's not a potluck <laughs> <laughs> is a it's a dinner. dinner it's a dinner where everybody is cooking yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Continue. Continue. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Okay. It's it's okay, JD. That's the point of the show. Um, I I mean, you did you did. I totally forget what I was going to say. Hold on. I'll get it back. <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner. You your and your family. Th- thank you, JD. Thank you. Not not my family. With you guys. Oh yes. What would I always bring? What would I always Any put my teasers. name down for? Y- yeah. Uh, <laughs> Any tizers. <laughs> Any tizers. That was more of a, a bit. I would yeah. always bring wine. I always bring oh, like yeah, four or yeah, five yeah. bottles of right, wine. Right. Yeah. That's right. true. Because you, you need a drink, and this guy, uh, V, is, is clowning on this person for bringing a, uh, quote, assortment of exciting non-alcoholic <laughs> canned beverages. I, I do understand it is a, a place of work. Yeah. But what would you rather? This guy's like, oh, I made my famous turmeric cucumber elixir? <laughs> you don't want that. You want, like, real liquids, and people forget about the liquids. You're yeah, right. Uh, and frankly, from a cost perspective, if you are bringing like the wine or the booze or something, that's the most outlay of cash that anyone's <laughs> oh, going to spend. Oh, okay, thank you. Right. <laughs> let, let me retroactively thank you for all those years you brought wine, you money bags. 
Thank you. Thank you for appreciating everything that I did. Can I also I, say, you, you don't think it took time and effort? I was in, I was in the liquor store uh, with my Vivino app, taking pictures of the labels and, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. seeing what James Suckling had to say about right. it. Right. Yeah, of course. But 95 percent, 95 points or above only. OK, you know, nothing, been, nothing you know, too tannic. You know what would have been nicer if you had made a nice mold wine for mm. everyone? Put a little work into it. <laughs> We'll get to mold wine. Hey, later. That, that wine, I'm not even that wine was fantastic. When <laughs> it. Uh, Trey's at 100 percent right, though. There's a lot of anxiety when it comes to cooking for strangers, but I would also add to that transporting home cooked stuff to like mm-hmm. an oh, office party or anywhere. Like, it's stressful. So yeah. the getting something that's already in a package and bringing that, it just makes sense. It just mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Like I'm not saying bring frozen burritos or whatever <laughs> which again <laughs> bad luck i brought burritos <laughs> a bad luck potluck sounds like a hilarious <laughs> yeah, totally. like, it'd be really funny i mean we should do it like <laughs> the most disappointing things to possibly yeah, bring who, who could bring the worst <laughs> hey look what i brought certs <laughs> are those do they still make those <laughs> <laughs> Certs are not food, JD. Okay? <laughs> what about it? What if it was like chopped, where you put like you had an ing- a random ingredient generator on the internet, and it just gave you like four ingredients, and you have to make something mm, yeah. using those ingredients? Yeah, that's you can a great that. idea. I, like if we honestly were to have a no dunks potluck, and I didn't have my wife Nora, who is a great uh, chef, I like I don't know what I would make. I like <laughs> I would be like V. I'd, you're, pull pull pork. Pork. Yeah, pull okay. Pork. I have like okay. You're right. That's what I would think. <laughs> so okay, let me write down pulled pork on the list. Matt, you Dips. bring the wine. You bring your buffalo dip. That's what I'm bringing. No doubt. jd has got certs. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but I, I would meal. get. I get nervous. I would get nervous because I'm look. I'm skilled at a lot of things. I'd like to imagine, but cooking is not one of them. And so I might as well just go buy something. Right. And then lie, maybe lie about me making it. No, probably not. Just saying I bought it from here. And like, yeah. and like, put some thought into what you were saying. Like, go to a nice place, nice bakery, go to a nice restaurant, whatever. Support a small business. So I'd be doing that. And I don't see any okay. problem with it. Well, I'm going to say potlucks are not good. But if you do have to go to one, then bringing prepackaged food items is good. That's mm-hmm. where I'm landing on this <laughs> okay, okay i, I agree yeah. i actually agree with that i don't love a work potluck either like yeah. no i don't mind a potluck among friends like it, that's no, no, that no. to me is like you're helping out the host is not having to make everything yeah, exactly. so it's like let us make uh the potatoes let us make whatever this side dish all that but a work potluck oh come man. on what? if you're if your work is doing a potluck I think it's time to find a new job. Come on, boss. <laughs> what are you doing? It's take Christmas us out. time. Yeah, let's take us out. Take yeah, us yeah. out or, you yeah, know, yeah. let's the spring for uh, some catering over here. If you want to have a cash bar, that's fine. But, you know. Like, yeah, you're right. It's like, uh, okay, we're having a potluck at work. So that's great. Everybody doesn't have to work for three hours during the day. Exactly. But guess what? You're working three hours <laughs> at night. <laughs> yes. It's not more making this crap Part of you're your gonna job. That's out. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plus the 30 minutes you got to get there early to put all the burritos in the microwave. <laughs> yeah. and you can't do more than one at a time. It's very annoying oh, to do. Right. All right, let's move on uh, to a very simple topic, gift cards. Are they good? That's it. There's no email for this one. It's just mm. gift cards. Are they good? The gift that says, this is certainly a store. <laughs> Here's some money that and you can use in one spot. <laughs> I have put zero thought into this. Mm. Um, are they good? Put me down for good. I think that if, uh, especially for older uncles and aunts who feel like they want to buy something for your, their, you know, your kids or your, you know, it may seem impersonal or whatever, but it's, they feel like they're giving something and, uh, you know, it's, it's a gift card. You go to cheesecake. Factory. It's practical. It's, it's practical. It's You're very practical. It generally. Yeah. If, I mean, if it like, I remember that that was, there was an age where like my aunts and uncles, Stopped like giving me a gift. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and we're and I don't know like Phil wants. Yeah, and it was like it was more a pain in the ass, and I get all that, and it's more like here's a twenty five dollar or fifty dollar gift certificate for like either a video game store or even it it turned into like Tim Hortons cards like gift certificates, and it was like sure, cool, yeah, I'm gonna use that. (laughs) Yeah, so thank. So I'm I'm team team thumbs up. I'm I'm good with uh, gift cards. 
Yeah, y'all have it's actually in- talked me into it. I'm good as well. I think it's, it's an <laughs> underwhelming experience to open it. You're like, yeah, oh, it's a gift fair. card. Yes. But then when you got it there in your wallet, you're like, I'm going to use it. Yeah. This is perfect. I ain't spending my cash. I'm spending cash only here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's interesting you say that uh, they're so convenient and, and you're using them. Uh, because here we go. <laughs> I have some yeah, facts This is true. Okay, you. go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. 47% of Americans currently have at least one unused gift card voucher or store credit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a dumb poll. <laughs> First of all, if you have an unused gift card and the survey person asks you, you probably don't know you have an unused gift card. Just well, saying. Maybe they're looking through their wallet I mean, or like their oh, purse. Yeah, like, oh. Damn, is there a gap in here? Well, well, that's the thing. You have to keep it in your wallet to know that you have it. Gotta keep but it you on, can't yeah. start putting that many things <laughs> yeah. in your wallet. I know. Yeah. It's tough. Uh, the use it the average, yeah. Yeah. average unused amount of gift cards is $175 per person. <laughs> Estimates say that up to twenty million, twenty-one billion dollars. There's twenty-one billion dollars in unused cards. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Floating around there, we we could <laughs> we could solve so many problems in this world if we just got those gift cards together and all went to Walmart. Right. But okay, <laughs> spent our money on it. Uh, I, yes. Okay. I knew those stats were coming. I knew they were. I knew you were going to throw them at us. And and I will admit, you ever use a gift card? And it's like, uh, let's say it's a hundred dollar mm-hmm. gift card. I buy something. It's like comes out to eighty two dollars. You know, you got eighteen dollars left on this yeah. gift card. It's like you're never I, using it. I'm never using it because you're never. Using you're generally it. never going to remember how much is on it. That's a one part. I have taken now to just taking a sharpie and just writing on it. Eighteen dollars oh, are smart. on this. Yeah. Because I'm going to lose the re- the receipt yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm never keeping those two together unless you tape it, I guess, to it. Um, but I like the idea of like, I know you like this store. You like this genre of a product, mm. be it a Nike store, be it a, you know, a Williams-Sonoma, whatever. But I don't know really exactly what you need or want. So, you know, instead of just giving you $100, <laughs> cold hard cash. <laughs> I am leaning you towards this, right. this one store, which again I think you like, uh, and have at it. Pick what you want, I and you can use it online now too. So yeah, it's like totally fair. I think that's fair. Here's a hundred bucks to. I know you like to cook, so here's a right. hundred bucks to William Sonoma. Get whatever you want. Yeah. But the Buy trick, one utensil, <laughs> right? Yeah, bucks at William yeah. Sonoma. Right. Yeah. I mean, the trick the trick is to spend over the card, right? Like you, yes. you're buying something. It's a Nike store, and you got and there's something that you want, like. That's more expensive. That's that's the best way to use the card. Retail got discount. retail got you doing that. Then. So yeah, well, yep. but uh, it's still it's going towards something that you want. You may not have been able to afford the, yeah. the shoes that you wanted, but a hundred bucks towards it it goes a long way. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. Would you rather someone give you like a thoughtful gift that maybe it's not exactly what you want, but it's very thoughtful, and then you return it and get something you want? Or would you just want a gift card to that same store? Gift card. There's no... I I don't think I've ever returned anything. Ever. <laughs> you know, like so everything you Never. buy fits you flawlessly? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I just... I blame myself. So I should have done my research. <laughs> should have looked into it on I hate returning things. Hate, hate, mm. hate, hate. So I really try and avoid it. I'm sure I have it in my, you know, 42 years here of living, uh, returned something, but not a lot. You can count on one hand the things I've returned. So no, give me the gift card. Don't, don't, like, good on you. You tried, but now I'm, it wasn't that good. <laughs> like, it wasn't that good if I'm returning it. So no way. Mm. Gift card. Well, gift yeah. Card. Okay. Well, so Trey, where are you on this one? You said it's good. You're not you're not bummed that it, it limits your purchasing power. Like you wouldn't rather just have a hundred dollars. I might be flip flopping back. The other <laughs> oh way. no! Oh, boy. I might be flip flopping oh, back boy. the other way. But that's only an idealized world where we, you would feel comfortable just giving somebody a hundred bucks cash. Just give people cash. Yeah. What? What? Why did? Why is it not like wh- when you drill down? Why is giving someone a hundred dollars worse than giving someone a hundred dollars in Target? Credit? It's it's the tar- it's. It's the package that it comes in, right? Exactly. It's the bit of the package it comes in. And again, it's the usually the idea of like, I know you sort of like this store or you like this. Uh, I did something. Theme. Yeah, yeah. I did something right. more than go to an ATM. My, my grandma just gives us $100 for Christmas at this point. It's a good grandma. Respects your grandma. Yeah. It's a good grandma. It's like here, it's a, everybody gets a card at Christmas now and it's just got money in it. Yeah. Everyone's yeah, like, everybody loves cash. Yeah. Make it a check. 
Make it a check too. That's no, that's, that's a, a chore. chore. No, that's, yeah, a, that's chore. a chore. Exactly. You yeah. could deposit it with your phone. Oh, it has yeah, your grandmother's signature on it. Yeah. Maybe she's got the the card with the little reindeer on it or something. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. You're right. That is pretty cute. Uh, not um, really with money. I think these are on the the Mount Rushmore of awful Christmas gifts. Mm. Give, gift certificates. Gift certificates. Wow. Awful. I, I just think it's. I honestly would just rather have the cash. You're basically just making a donation to the company. You're giving them. Uh, money to invest while you decide what you want, and like like we were talked about, true. there's always something left over. I, what, what would you put? Like, so I have um, books, a book that you did not specifically ask for, a book that like your aunt's just like, yeah. oh, I saw this uh, on the New York Times bestseller list. Especially if it's a self help book. <laughs> um, <laughs> what else do I have on there? A calendar. No. Nobody needs calendars no. anymore. No one needs. A I calendar. almost. I thought this holiday season I was gonna buy a like a joke sort of Real Housewives calendar for Nora. Yeah. Being a fan, but then I I stopped myself. I'm like, <laughs> she might look at it and go, "That's funny," but you're not using it. Right. <laughs> we are not hanging you're a not calendar. Putting it up? No. Uh, we're a calendar no. household. Wow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Old school. That's wow. amazing. What's okay, the calendar you got like going a, right now? Uh, pictures of the girls. Oh, like okay. a oh that's, nice. yeah. that's really that's nice. nice. Okay. You should get Nora that calendar skis. She would probably enjoy she, it more. She would. <laughs> she would. Um, all right. So I'm saying not good. Looks like we have a flip flopper on Trey. Skeets is saying good. JD is saying good. I'm good. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I'm ultimately good, but you've convinced me that cash maybe just is better. <laughs> Which cash is, is why king, ultimately baby. I'm good on <laughs> gift cards because we're just not we're just not there yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> I do love getting a big bill though. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice crisp like, hundred dollar bill. Yeah. When am I yeah, gonna give crack a, give it? Give a publisher's like, clearinghouse <laughs> size check. Oh yeah, <laughs> for like fifty dollars. That'd be funny. That's a funny idea. That's good. Or a hundred ones, like also funny, make annoying. It, make but, it rain. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of good ideas here yeah. alright guys when people are confused and need help navigating life's biggest decisions they seek our wise counsel and we deliver an airtight verdict it's time to settle this alright guys a few holiday settle this is to get through the first one Christmas trees real or fake what are you going with here? Skeet, start us off. Um, uh, wow. Well, I'll say this. Never had the honor to grow up in a house with a real tree. Mm. Never had that honor. And oh I my God, that. that's your origin story. <laughs> that's is. that's why you're always rubbing and pine I, salt and, on everything. And I, I was going to say there might be something. Uh, hear me out on this theory. I don't know if it's true. Uh, that it's like uh, if you date someone that's a brunette, you're like, you're mm-hmm. always intrigued by the blondes. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh. Be cool, sort of. Maybe have a blonde girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I'm into brunettes, but you know, it's the, the, the it's the, the is the grass greener on the other side. I wonder if that happens with trees. <laughs> like as a fake tree person, growing up my entire life, and to this day, I'm in, I, I'm like, oh man, I love I love a real tree, <laughs> but I don't want to. <laughs> but but I'm happy with my fake tree. Like you know, there's some convenience to it. You know, it's making right. less of a mess. I, I there is not the, uh, the the job of going to get it and all that and fairly expensive every year right so there's that but uh oh man i'm i'm jealous <laughs> i'll tell you that you i'll tell you that but maybe that's not i don't know so this theory maybe doesn't work someone has a real tree man like yourself do you ever think you ever look at me you ever come in my house and go <laughs> look at this guy look at this guy in this fake tree these guys got it made <laughs> well i mean i had never i had never thought about it no offense to you <laughs> damn but i've never once been jealous of somebody with a fake tree ah yeah i didn't think so i think it goes the other way though yeah like you're saying. Yeah. Uh, the real tree, it's the standard for a reason. But the fake tree is doing its job. The fake tree is perfect. People probably overhate a fake tree. I think they are good in general, but I think a real tree is better. F- fake trees 25 years ago, garbage. Yeah. Yes. Looked like yes. shit. Yes. Didn't look like a tree. Now they're so good. Oh, yeah. In fact, I yeah. can walk into somebody's house and not know right away yeah. unless I go up and touch it. Yeah. The, uh, o- the only thing that, that <laughs> the only thing, so, so, sir, I know you didn't grow up with a tree, but could you please stop fingering mine? Thank you. The kids are uncomfortable. We just told them Santa Claus doesn't exist. <laughs> the, the only thing that a real tree has over a fake tree, in my mind, is the smell. Ah, but you can buy the fake smell now. I can you though, because I've been looking all over, and I, re- I actually, I for you real, want, I want a candle. 
I've looked for a candle. It's oh, not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. Have you looked at the Goop catalog? I have not. I have not okay. ventured into the Goop <laughs> yet. But uh, yeah, maybe I'll check it out. But yeah, that's the only uh, thing that I don't like about fake trees. But there's no chore. They're mm-hmm. always perfect. They fit exactly where you, you buy them for your house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is the... the are you saving a tree? I guess, but also it's that eventually our fake tree is going to end up in a landfill for a thousand years. So right, right. it's a push, I guess, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I like a fake tree, but I think I'm going to say, I'm going to say real tree. Okay. After everything I just said, I'm going <laughs> okay. real because just because of the smell. Smell, the smells smell. great. I'm with I love it. A hard, a hard turn. Um, so you would put anything in your house. No matter how inconvenient, as long as it smelled good. I actually would. I would. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think we can move on there. I'm, I'm, I'm a real real tree head, even though I have this little fake up. I never even had a tree before, but this yeah, is my first one. That. It's yeah. uh, it's a two-footer. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah. That's oh, no. cute. <laughs> Just broke it. Yeah, don't it's be got a lot of light face, settings. Though. It's got a light, lot of light settings. I would take you through them, but most people are just listening to this. So, uh, can I say quickly, that. Matt? When we moved into our new house a couple of years ago, they they left us some stuff. The uh, previous owners in the crawl space, they left us basically a brand new a dead Christmas body tree. No, oh tree. Okay. Yeah, because I, I don't. I wouldn't have wanted to go out and buy one. I know that feels weird buying a fake tree. <laughs> you gotta do it once, though. That's, That's the nice part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to drop. What? They probably aren't cheap. Three ninety nine, four ninety nine, whatever the wow. size. What? I guess. How much well, does fake a fake tree? tree I bet you a good fake tree costs. Good fake tree is yeah. a couple of hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah minimum. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Especially if they're pre- light, lights, pre-lit. lights, lights. Yeah. yeah ours, so ours nice. are a pre lit. That is that's a nice part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. God. Man, I'm I'm team fake tree. But my God, the smell of a real tree. <laughs> the, the 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 dangliness of a of a real tree mm. it changes over time. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It dies. But if you have cats, if you have cats, you're in trouble. Some cats get yeah. up in the tree. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's, That's the other happen. nice thing about having a real tree. Wilbur loves to drink out of it, so I never got to pour him water. Oh <laughs> Just wow! Just sipping sap. Oh. <laughs> sip and sap. Um, you bring that sap to a potluck tray. <laughs> Bad luck, sorry. Yeah. No, I brought it too. We got tree sap. <laughs> Next topic: eggnog or mulled wine. We did bring up mulled wine wow. before. Here it is: eggnog or mulled wine. Mm. Skeets, I know you're an eggnog man. No, no, <laughs> no. I've had some bad. Bad experiences with eggnog. Consume too experiences. much. Experiences. Nice. Uh, I gotta be honest. Don't love either of these. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I know it's a tough call. Like, yeah, it's a tough. They're call. not. They're. F- I'll drink them. They're there. I'll have a <laughs> glass to please somebody, but I definitely. I don't generally want it, and I'm not seeking it out. Yeah. I'm not making it. But I had a mold wine not too long ago, and I think <laughs> <laughs> you know because of recency bias. I'm team mold wine. I like. I like it that it's a warm drink. You're right. I like that part, the Christmas yeah. feeling, the fireplace, the dark lighting. Yeah. You know, so I'll go mold wine. Yeah, that, that's exactly <laughs> my problem. I always think I want mold wine. I'm like, wine, great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a little a splash of brandy, great. Yeah. yeah. It's warm. Ooh, I'm so cold. Yeah. <laughs> great. Yeah. And then they're like, sugar. You're like, yeah. Mm, honey. Well, okay, yeah. slow down. Uh, cinnamon stick. I'm not sure about yeah. that. Star yeah. anise. Absolutely not. <laughs> Cloves? What am I, smoking my first cigarette and I'm in the theater program? Definitely not. Cardamom pods? <laughs> wow. There's a lot in this. Yeah. It's yeah. too much. Yeah. And, then, and, and, and it's always disappointing. So I'm, I'm actually going to go nog. And that's wow. even though I'm lactose I've intolerant. I've never, seen, ne- never seen you drink a nog. Ever. You never gave me a nog. <laughs> I've never seen you. Because no one was bringing nog. beverages to the, to the potlucks. That's why. You would rather shit your pants for a week than have mulled wine. That that is cinnamon. That is a damning for the (laughs) mulled wine. Cowardice Uh, is a lifetime affliction, JD. Okay, (laughs) I'm not. I'm gonna stare right into the face of that nog. I'm going for it. Uh, Respect, Uh, JD. Where are you on this one? I'm going nog as well. Okay. Uh, 
I need a knife and fork to get through eggnog at the best of times. You know, <laughs> it just ugh, it's so gross. You got to cut it with rum, right? I mean, yeah. that's a given. <laughs> it I, sure I helps. Assume. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. This is an alcoholic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should have been clear. So, uh, but I don't think I've ever finished a glass of eggnog. No, in no my one life. has. I don't think anyone <laughs> yeah. has. Well, you have. I've seen you. <laughs> I was forced to do that. Yes. Against my will. Yeah. yeah. I did a, uh, what, a punch bowl of eggnog. Yeah, uh, pretty much. During a 30-minute television show. And I said it on the uh, No Dunks podcast recently. I I puked at the end of it, because that's a lot of eggnog. And uh, the drive home, I had the shakes. Like, yeah. I should not have been driving. My body was, like, convulsing from the <laughs> amount of sugar in it. Shake too fast, they turn into scrambled eggs, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> a nice souffle. I'm Team Nog here. Funny name. It's uh, a good name. <laughs> leaves a little thing on your on your mustache. Very cool. Uh, everybody thinks it's gross, but people drink it every single year. Got to be a winner. But but uh, but uh, a positive from old wine is at a party. It does smell good. Yes. I, I, I love it. I'm like, ooh. You're right. I, now, I'm with you, Matt. Then I have a taste. I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Not as good, but I love the smell. So, JD, I'm surprised you're not in. You like your uh, tree smelling good. Can't yeah, but uh, then yeah. I'm I'm looking. We walk into JD's house and he's got a mulled wine on the stove. I look at you. I go, I can't even smell the tree skeets. It, it, all I'm smelling is <laughs> yeah. cardamom pods. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. yeah that's true. <laughs> I mean, I, I like the smell of potpourri, but I don't eat potpourri. You know, like that's what it's like for me. It's it's just that sounds that sounds a lot like what someone that eats potpourri would say. <laughs> <laughs> what have you heard? Uh, things. <laughs> things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard you've been asking everyone for gift certificates to William <laughs> Sonoma, and it's not for earthenware <laughs> cook pots. That's what I heard. It's a, I, uh, it's a lot easier to pour a glass of eggnog. Mm. Mold wine, I uh, find. You don't have to ladle, ladle. it. Ladle. Yeah. Make it a mess. It. No one's good with a ladle anymore. That's right. Ladles are for soup, <laughs> yeah. not drinks. Kids aren't learning how to ladle anymore these days. Yeah. Uh, okay, hit me with your just gut reaction to this one. Let's do it quickly. New Year's Eve. Stay home alone, and that includes, let's say, a partner, if you have a partner. Mm-hmm. Stay home alone, group dinner, or go out and rage. Uh, can, I, I'm going to go group dinner, but I'm incorporating uh, group dinner t- turning into a house party with Okay, friends. that's fine, but I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> no more than eight to ten people. Perfect. Because otherwise, then it's Perfect. your raging. Perfect. Okay, that's what you want. I love it. Yes. At, at this okay. age of my life, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going dinner um, only if it's at my house, though. Yeah, nice. nice. Okay. You want to stay okay. there, get, get a little yep. tipsy on your nog and yeah. brandy. And then I don't want to worry about getting home. Yeah. Like surge pricing, oh. all that stuff. Yeah. yeah it's very point. hard. Or at walking or cr- distance. Or what about crash at somebody's place? Crash is fine. Yeah. Crash is fine, but I prefer it at my house. <laughs> so. You're an adult, JD. You're not <laughs> crashing at someone's exactly. place. What are you talking about? Exactly. Are, are you kidding me? I, I had a, a New Year's party. You came to it, Trey, I believe. Last year, co- yeah. last year or two years ago? Last year. It was last year. No, that was last year, yeah. Holy moly. That was last year. And uh, now you didn't crash, but I ha- I made it clear people should crash. They're, you yeah. know, they're encouraged to crash. Trey doesn't uh, drink alcohol, so it's yeah. like, okay. But uh, a couple people, a couple spare bedrooms, why not? That's the, Then we actually oh. partied. Yeah. But then no, you're I mean, still hosting idea. the next morning. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I'm people, fine with it. People but are good. We make that's not, that's make not how I want to start. Out. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to start my new year like waking up bedraggled on your laminate flooring. <laughs> you're not on my – you're on a bed. Oh, laminate floor. First off, how dare you? I know. Hardwood flooring. <laughs> Those are hardwood. Bed. I apologize. Yeah. Nora's going to kill me. Jesus. <laughs> I don't and know that, why Lamb just... Hold well, you don't want to start your New Year being made breakfast by somebody? That sounds like fucking delight to me. Okay. Yeah, it does so, sound great. Yeah. I just don't okay. want to make the breakfast for well, somebody. Well, no, 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 no. Yeah, house party at somebody else's house. I made pulled pork and, and <laughs> certs. <laughs> I brought a six-pack of certs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I'm saying rage. I mean, it never works out, but God damn it, I'm, I'm an oh, optimist. You should go and rage at least when you're young. You should experience yeah, of course. the rage. Yes, yes. Now we're all old and we just want to be home and able to go to bed after we see the ball drop. Yeah. But you should go and see how bad it is. Y- yeah. Yes, yes and like but one, one out of every rage. five yeah. New Year's Eves when you're younger, par- party, raging, whatever, yep. club, they'll be memorable. Yeah. They'll yes, be like this cool. iconic mm-hmm. night yep. and then the other three or four will be garbage. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yep. You, you have to think of it like you're, um, like you're a slugger. You get yeah. like four out of ten New Year's that work, yeah. you're doing amazing. I, 
Man, you're Ted Williams. It's you're Ted yeah, Williams. I worked I worked in the service industry way too long. It's I always had to work New Year's Eve, oh. and it's just fucking amateur hour out there. <laughs> These people don't know how to drink. They they go crazy for some reason, and it's all for a stupid countdown. And it's all always way past their bedtime as well. So there's just nothing but. <laughs> Puke and passed out people everywhere. This, these are the ragers I'm talking about. <laughs> so uh, I, it's just, it's too much. I'm not just saying that because I'm an old man. I'm saying it because that's what it's like out there. Yeah. That's all. No, but I'm old and I'd prefer to be out. <laughs> that too. Understood. All right, guys, this is big. To get further into the holiday spirit, it's time for the inaugural. Is this good Yankee Swap gift exchange? Woo-hoo! Wow. All right, if you don't know how Yankee Swap works, all participants get a number. The first person unwraps their gift. Once the second person gets their gift, they can choose to keep it or swap it with the first present if they like that more, and so on and so on. So the person that picks fourth will have the choice of any of the people's presents that picked before them. Uh, before the show, we determined that the order would be oldest to youngest. Oh, wow. So, hmm. sorry to say, that's JD. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to be first in this, do you? No. No. Yeah. Well, sorry, JD. <laughs> sorry. Uh, JD, Skeets, me, and then Trey. Um, I should note, all these gifts are podcast related. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. We're all podcast. So, JD, um, you can't see the gifts under my tiny two-foot tree. <laughs> um, so, give me a number between one and four, and that, that will decide oh, okay. which, gift, which gift you get. Uh, give me number four. Good choice. Okay, JD, great news. All, all the gifts are $100 gift certificates to Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> exactly. Um, you just got an A-list guest for your podcast. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. But, but the audio is terrible. So uh, you finally holy. landed your dream guest. So let's say for you, it's uh, uh, it's Christopher it, Nolan. It's it, uh, what? <laughs> of course, the audio is going to be terrible on that. He's dead me up. Uh, 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 my uh, ideal uh, guest uh, right uh, now. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The only the only celebrity that I'm actually interested in meeting, Mike White. Oh, the White Lotus survivor fame. Exactly. Okay. Can you imagine? It would be a five-hour podcast. Anyway, oh, because okay. you'd, you'd have so much so to talk much. about. Survivor and then the White Lotus. Yeah, wow. absolutely. Right. So you're excited. Mike White's coming on. Yes. But it's a hot day. Mike's got his AC cranking. It's producing oh, an God. aggressive hum. There's leaf blowers outside his house. He's not using headphones, so there's an echo. Okay. And there's a delay, so you're constantly oh. talking over each yeah. other. And he burps a lot. <laughs> That's actually, okay, so, that's a, so that's, that's a benefit, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Notable. all right, okay. Okay, so are, are you happy with your gift? I mean, I have no choice, right? Yeah. I can't... Well, someone might take it from you. Okay, well, great. Okay, I so mean, we'll see. We'll got, see. You see this is, so yeah, this is where you like say, oh, I, I hope no one I takes this I hope no moment. one takes my fight away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Skeets, pick a number. Uh, so what number did JD... I had to pick four. Okay, uh, you know what? Give me number one. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Spotify rap. Right. So here's this present. Okay. You're on every NBA fan Spotify wrapped, but you're always number five, and the four oh. podcasts ahead oh, of you no. are your least favorite basketball podcasts. So you're kind of happy, but also insulted. Why do people think those other shows are better than yours? Are you crazy or are they crazy? What else have you been sure of that's possibly untrue? Your mind caves in on itself as you fall into a tailspin, questioning every belief you've ever held sacred. Do you like your gift? I don't love it. I got to be honest. Uh, I actually uh, made it a rule for all the No Dunks guys when everybody was very kindly sharing their Spotify wrapped uh, lists when it came to the podcast. And we would retweet automatically everyone where no dunks or no buffs, our Survivor podcast, was number one. And then we would uh, sometimes like, but generally just ignore the other ones where we ranked <laughs> second, third, fourth, or fifth. So this is tough for me. JD, Do you give want me Mike JD's White. gift? Yeah, you JD, want to give have me Mike White. Oh, come on. Yeah, because people are going to expect shitty audio quality from me. So, but it's a great <laughs> poll. He's in demand right now. We're going to do some numbers. I'm taking Mike White. Man, I could have dealt. I could have dealt with all of that. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not. You, know, you don't have the capacity 
Anyways, go ahead. I don't it. have the capacity. JD, but, you man. can't take out people talking over each other. Yeah, right. You can, I mean, you, you can't. I mean, you could only do so much with the leaf blowers and the hum. It's not going to sound up to your standards. And Skeets, now you have this gift. Let's say your dream guest is not Mike White. I don't know who it is. Uh, Michael Jordan, let's say. Yeah, good guess. All the comments are going to be like, man, I was so excited to listen to this, but I could barely get through it. It sounded like shit. So you're, you're getting the downloads, sure. But now you got to deal with an angry comment section. But you're yeah, okay with it. Yeah, but the questions I'm going to ask our bangers we're gonna get so <laughs> great uh and then the, it will it will it'll make sense the audio quality will be crappy and that's why we'll be ranked third fourth fifth on people's spotify <laughs> rap list like, wow they get great guests but can't understand a single word they're saying uh, okay well sorry. that's exciting we had our first swap yep. um i'm gonna go next so just keep it uh, legit. Well, JD, can you pick a number for me? Okay, uh, number two. Just keep it legit. Thank you. Okay, number two. Woohoo! I just got a lucrative sponsorship. Ooh, nice. That's good. Ooh, okay. My biggest ever. The money is great, but. Uh oh. The uh -oh. ad is for hemorrhoid cream. Uh oh. And I have to do the live read and endorse it by talking about how my bum is riddled with painful piles. And when my co hosts try to bail me out by suggesting that I'm just saying that for the ad, I have to push back and reiterate that it's a serious condition and I live in fear of using the toilet. Everyone laughs behind my back. Someone starts a Reddit thread about how I'm an adult that doesn't know how to wipe properly. I have to come on the show and tell everyone I do know how to wipe properly and I eat a diet rich in fiber. Now now I can't get mad without someone snickering that I have roid rage. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's a tough gift. That's a tough one. <laughs> that's a tough uh, one. Uh, <laughs> that's a tough um, one. What are you doing, Matt? I'm taking... JD... Come uh, on. <laughs> I'm taking the... the, the 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 Spotify rap top five because oh, wow. I'm going for volume. If I'm top five on everyone's list, that's a lot of listeners. I'm happy with that. Uh, I don't need what, to what, what a loser mentality. Coming yeah. fifth. <laughs> Skeetsa, ask me if I was oh on God. anyone's so Spotify rap. I mean, well, the show did start three weeks before the Spotify rap launch. Yeah, but yeah you watch next year. Is this good? We'll be on some Spotify rap list. And I'll tell you what, I know for a fact, Matty O will not be happy. <laughs> coming in second, third, fourth, or fifth. I'll guarantee that. Um, You're a I'm winner. just gonna. I'm have to learn to accept that people like uh, Meghan Markle's archetypes podcast more than mine, <laughs> and that's that's fine. <laughs> so before we get to Trey, let's just recap who has what. I have. Uh, Spotify rap number five. Skeets mm -hmm. has A-list guest, but terrible audio. Yep. And JD has... Uh, lucrative sponsor. <laughs> 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 sponsor. You have Roid Rage, buddy. Roid Rage. <laughs> That's what we're saying behind your back. <laughs> behind your ass. I'm sorry, JD. That's sorry fine. to do that to you. Well, I'm Trey, rolling in that Roid money, though. So it's fine. You are. Um, there's only one uh, gift left, Trey. So here it is. Congratulations! You get your most listened to episode Ooh. ever! Whoa, whoa, okay, whoa, okay, whoa! Okay. What's the butt though? What's okay. the butt? But you sucked on it. <laughs> the show popped, but you had nothing to do with it. In fact, it succeeded in spite of you. You rambled, you were interrupted, you couldn't get a single point across, you made some jokes that got zero laughs. At one point, you sat really still and pretended to be frozen so you didn't have to say anything anymore. Wow. You walk around knowing that your show's biggest success is also your <laughs> greatest failure. Wow. Are you happy with your gift? Yes. Uh, I'm very wow. happy. Okay. I think that's I'm smart. thrilled with my gift. Yeah. A. Great numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, the first, that's the best part. B. I'm coming back stronger on the next episode. I know I got a chance to oh. improve with more and more people listening. They're like, oh, this episode was so good. Imagine if that big dumb guy says something. <laughs> <laughs> Next episode. You're going to impress them. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Only upwards momentum from there, I think. <laughs> well, speaking of bad audio, it sounds like I got some wow. of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to give me uh, roid rage over here. <laughs> um, all right, well, that was exciting. That was our first uh, gift swap. But well, I don't get to trade? Oh, so, but you said you I were happy. You happy. Oh, yeah. Ooh, uh, but a <laughs> twist. Are they throwing in samples for the hemorrhoid cream? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say yes, they are. I they are. Especially if you're doing an endorsement. I got, I, got, wow. I got a swap. I want the lucrative sponsorship. 
because I need the cream. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the money. No, I do it for the I cream. Need cream. I need to try it out. Uh, and, and Trey, you know, when you famously, you know, you sometimes do have a temper, like the famous uh, Shake Shack moment yes. when you when you screamed, "I'm walking a Shake Shack at us." Then you would walk away and we'd be like. Guy's got his voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Swapped. Wait, so now I'm confused. Who has what? I have the be- uh, best episode. Uh, but you downloads. sucked on it. I suck. But that's literally my life. <laughs> Every episode. Oh, no, you're the, the best uh, part of the episode. Of No Dikes, anyway. Uh, Matt, you ironically have uh, uh, yeah. the one where a leaf blower is blowing in the background right now. No, no, that's me. I'm no, sorry. I know. You, you have that. I have that one, yeah. The A-list. I have Spotify yes. wrapped. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Is Jill okay. in the apartment yeah, leaf that's, blowing that is right really now? Loud. That is so loud. I know. I, I have, uh, I don't have good windows. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have windows? <laughs> I don't have windows. I live in... <laughs> I live in a. I don't have good windows. Just I, I live in a gazebo. <laughs> <laughs> it lives in a nativity set, taking it to the next mile for the holiday podcast. Oh my god, we got to get you a gift certificate to Home Depot so you can go buy some windows for your gazebo. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. There's only one thing left to do, and that's good because uh, I can barely hear myself. It's time for subjective trivia. <laughs> All right, subjective trivia. It's just like regular trivia, except only I know the answer. But this time, plot twist, there is an objective answer. Mm -hmm. So follow my thought process here. So I was going to ask you, what is the best Christmas carol? Not Christmas song, Christmas carol. But then I was thinking, this show's been very Christmas heavy. So I should ask you what the best Hanukkah song is. So I was looking up Hanukkah songs, and I discovered to my surprise that in 2012, famed Bay Area rapper Too Short released a Hanukkah song called The Hanukkah Song. <laughs> what? This is a real song. <laughs> okay. Uh, have any of you ever heard this song? Uh, no. No. Missed it. No, okay. <laughs> perfect, for this, perfect for this question. <laughs> so here's five couplets randomly selected <laughs> from Two Shorts <laughs> of the Hanukkah Song. <laughs> All right. There, there's five couplets. Here's the thing. One is fake. I need you to find the fake oh one. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay, so let's go through them yeah, together. Yeah, you say them. You okay? wrap them. The first one, I'm frying Lutkus, I'm making a mess, with some Jewish girls pinching Tuchus. <laughs> oh, come on, too short to not write that. Uh, Tuchus is uh, Yiddish for uh, a bum bum. Okay, next one. This ain't Rosh Hashanah, this ain't Passover, it's Hanukkah, baby. Now move that ass over. I'm telling you right now, guys, that feels like a real one. Uh, I mean, yeah, that okay. could be okay. a too short okay. lyric. Yeah. Okay, next one. It's even better than Yom Kippur. I got seven gifts, and I want one more. Mm. Okay. All right. Number four. <laughs> to my Hebrew honeys, you know I adore ya. Make them dizzy like a dreidel. Keep it lit like a menorah. <laughs> okay. Bars, man. That's Bars. <laughs> and then the last one. You love Christmas, but it's only one night. Some people say it's 12. But it's only one night. Oh my god! That, uh, there's no way Matt wrote that. So yeah. that one's real too. <laughs> it's a great observation. <laughs> he, I was like, oh, twelve days of Christmas. It's one night. <laughs> yeah. All right. So why don't you guys uh, go through them maybe one by one just to remind people, JD, if you want to throw it back up, yeah. and then figure out which is the fake one that is in these uh, two short Hanukkah song lyrics. Okay. So do you, you guys agreed with me with the uh, Rosh Hashanah? This ain't Passover as a real lyric, so we can eliminate that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, sure. no, oh, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. And how, that last one, the you love Christmas, but it's like I just don't see Matt writing. <laughs> yeah, that I one. don't see that. So that one's too short as well, <laughs> or his ghostwriter uh, from Christmas Past or something. Um, and then these other three. I mean, I, I don't know. The first one felt the most. I, I agree. I think the it's most the first. Matt. <laughs> yeah, like pinch and tuck us. Yeah, exactly. Like that's... that's the like a menorah. Everyone knows as a, as a Hanukkah symbol. Right? Yeah, right. yeah. Or took us. Yeah, so let's sure. get rid of yeah. Hebrew honeys because okay. okay, that's too short. So it's down to the. It's, it's even better than Yom Kippur. That's, I got seven gifts and I want one yeah, that's, more. Wow, that could be. And I'm frying Ludkus. I'm making a mess with some Jewish girls 
pinching Tuchus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you... <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> Katie, what do you think? The first one? I'm not, Why is he I, laughing, though? Why is he laughing? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Too Short said it in a, in a, in a rap song about... <laughs> Hanukkah or it's Matt that wrote it, and he loves it so much. Feels like Matt. <laughs> I do love laughing at my own joke. <laughs> yeah. I want some Jewish girls pinching tuchus. Pinching tuchus. Fried latkes is what though. really like. I know that's the okay, thing. Okay, so, so, so you have between that one and um, and the Yom Kippur. And the Yom Kippur. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got seven gifts and I want one more. Yeah. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. For you him think to- you. For him to make it the first one being the fake one is a bold that's, move by this guy. Yeah, it's a curveball. It's a curveball, it's a a curve curveball but sure. I think it's exactly I'm in on. I'm in on that being the fake. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, number one is the fake. Yeah. Yeah. And... Oh! It's wow. number four. Oh, what? The, the, the Hebrew honeys? Wow. To my what? Hebrew honeys, you know make I adore you. Make them dizzy like a dreidel. Keep it lit like a menorah. That was written by a rapper called Kosher Santa, a.k.a. Matt Austin. Wow. <laughs> well done. I mean, I think, was that the one I said right away? I was like, no, that's, that one feels real. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. Too Short, literally said, pinching tuchus. So you've listened to the song? Oh yeah, it? it's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's available on Spotify. It's even on Apple Music. So it's it's everywhere. It's I'm real. Wow. Okay. Cool. Too short. Your rapper well, name is too, too shorter. I'd rather be called Royd Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, remember, if you have topics, tweet them to me at StartersMatt or email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Remember to rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, do you guys have anything to promote? Are you looking forward to the big Christmas games? Oh, yeah. Really excited for five games on Christmas Day. You know, it's it's so different than the other days of the NBA season <laughs> where the games are on during the day. No, we're, of course, pumped. Uh, but we're excited for a little break, too, in the uh, no-dunk schedule. Obviously, J.D., Headed to Europe, TK headed to Chicago. That's right. right. That Just right? got tickets for the Bulls on December 26th. Oh, Ooh. Anniversary Ooh. Yeah. celebration. Exciting time. But we'll have some like uh, fun no dunks YouTube like shorts, like some uh, social media content, and uh, Tess and I might even jump on and do some like live streams the following uh, day on Boxing Day and stuff like that. So Boxing yeah. Day special. Yeah, why Boxing not? Day I mean, I'm home. I'm not going anywhere this year. <laughs> might as well hang Just- out with the people. <laughs> just longingly touching his fake tree for six days. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go get a real tree now. Nice. You should do it. Treat yourself. Treat yourself? Um, <laughs> 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 uh, all right, guys. Quick programming note. No show next week, but we will be back the first week of the new year. JD, thank you so much, as always, for being here and producing the show and completely cutting out those leaf blowers to the point where it's awkward <laughs> that we even mention it because no one will be able to hear it. Uh, <laughs> Skeets and Trey. Uh, oh, so, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mike White. Uh, Skeets and Trey, thanks uh, so much for coming on. Thanks for listening. For everyone, I'm Matt Austin, and this was good. Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2023.